<coughs> All right, come on, come on, you got this. You got this. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, Hi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today's read is actually last week's kind of read in between the spotting of the new moon and the old month. So, uh, yeah. There's always that. Uh, to, I'm going to do last week's read. It's going to be Torah Portion 23 per Kuti, I think is how it's pronounced. It's going to be Exodus 38, 21 through 40, 38. Uh, 1 Kings 8, 1 through 21 and John 6, 1 through uh, 7, 1. And Revelations 15, 5 through 8. Mm, our first read. These are the records of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of testimony as they were recorded in the commandments of Moses. The responsibility of the Levites under the direction of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest, Bazalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur of the tribe of Judah, made all the com all that Yahweh commanded Moses. And with him was Oholiab, the son of uh, Ahishamach. Of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer of embroider of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen. All the gold that was used for the work and all the construction of the sanctuary, the gold from the offering, was twenty nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. The silver from those of the congregation who were <coughs> recorded was a hundred talents. And 1,775 shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary, a becca, a head that is half a shekel by the shekel of the sanctuary for everyone who is listed in the records from 20 years old and upward for 603,550 men. The hundred talents of silver were for the casting for, were for casting the bases of the sanctuary and the base of the veil, a hundred bases for the hundred talents. A talent of base, and of the 1,775 shekels, he made hooks for the pillars, and overlaid their capitals, and made fillets for them. The bronze that was offered was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. With it, he made the bases for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, and the bronze grating for it, and all the utensils of the altar. To the bases around the court and the bases of the gate of the court, all the pages, the sorry, all the pegs of the tabernacle and all the pegs around the court. From the blue and purple and scarlet yarns, they made fine, finely woven garments for the ministry in the holy place. They made the holy garments for Aaron as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. And they hammered out gold leaf, and he cut it into threads to work into blue and purple and scarlet yarns, and into the fine twine linen. In skilled design, they made for the ephod attaching shoulder pieces joined to it at its two edges. And the skillfully woven band on it was of one piece with it, and he made it of gold, blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. As Yahweh had commanded Moses... They made the onyx stones enclosed in settings of gold filigree and engraved like an engravings of a signet according to the names of the sons of Israel. And he set them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod to be stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel as Yahweh had commanded Moses. <coughs> he made the breastpiece in skilled work and in the style of the ephod of gold, blue, purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. It was square. They made the breast piece double a span its length and a span its breadth when doubled. And they set it in they set in it four rows of stones. A row of sardius, topaz, carbuncle was the first row. In the second row an emerald, a sapphire and a diamond. The third row a jacinth, an agate and an amethyst. In the fourth row a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in settings of gold filigree. 
There were twelve stones with their names according to the names of the sons of Israel. They were like signets, each engraved with its name, for the twelve tribes. And they were made on the breast piece, twisted chains like cords of pure gold. And they made two settings of gold filigree and two gold rings and put it on the ring, <coughs> put the two rings on the edges of the breast piece. They attached the two ends of the cord to the two settings of filigree. Thus they attach it in front of the shoulder piece of the ephod. Then they made two rings of gold and put them at the two ends of the breast piece on the front of the lower part of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod at its seam above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And they bound up the breast piece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with lace of blue so that they should lie on the skillfully woven band of the ephod and that the breast piece should not come loose from the ephod, as Yahuwah had commanded Moses. <coughs> he also made the robe of the ephod woven, all of blue, and the opening of the robe in it was like an opening in a garment, with a binding around the opening, so that it might not tear. Or the hem of the robe, they made pomegranates of blue, and, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. They also made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates, all around the hem of the robe, between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, around the hem of the robe, for min ministering as Yahweh had commanded Moses. They also made the coats woven of fine linen, for Aaron and his sons, and a turban of fine linen, and the caps of the fine linen, and the linen undergarments of fine twined linen, and a sash of fine twined linen, and of blue and purple and scarlet yarns embroidered with needlework, as Yahweh had commanded Moses. <coughs> they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold, and wrote on it an inscription like the engraving of a signet, Holy to Yahweh, and they tied, it, they tied to it a cord of blue to fasten it on a turban above, as Yahweh had commanded Moses. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished, and the people of Israel did according to all that Yahweh had commanded Moses, so they did. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent, and all its utensils, its hooks, its frames, its bars, its pillars, and its bases, the covering of the tenor, of the, uh, the covering of tin, tan <laughs> ram skins and goat skins, the veil of the screen, the ark of the testimony with its poles and its mercy seat, the table with all its utensils and the bread of the presence, the lamps set of pure gold and its lamps with it, <coughs> its lamps with the lamps set, and all its utensils for the oil of the light. <coughs> Excuse me. The golden altar, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, and the screen for the entrance of the tent, the bronze altar and its grating of bronze, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stands, the hangings of the court, its pillars, its bases, and the screen for the gate of the courts. Its cords, its pegs, and all the utensils for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, the fine twine, sorry, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his son, <coughs> of his sons, for their service as priests, according to all that Yahweh had commanded Moses. So the people of Israel had done all the work. And Moses saw that, saw all the work, and behold, they had done it as Yahweh had commanded. So. Had they done it, then Moses blessed them. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall erect the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and you shall put in it the ark of the testimony, and you shall screen the ark with a veil. And you shall bring in the table and arrange it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and set up its lamps, and you shall put the golden altar for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and set up the screen for the door of the tabernacle, and you shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and place the basin between the tent of the meeting and the altar, and put water in it, and you shall set up the court all around, and hang up the screen for the gate of the court. Then you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and consecrate it in all its furnishing, furniture, so that it may become holy. And you shall also anoint the altar burnt offering and all its utensils, and consecrate the altar, so that the altar may become most holy. And you shall anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and shall wash them with water. And put on Aaron the holy garments, and you shall anoint him and consecrate him. 
that he may serve me as priests. And you shall bring his sons also, and put coats on them, and anoint them, and you, as you anointed their father that they may serve me as priests, and their anointing shall admit them to a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. This Moses did according to all that Yahweh had commanded him, so he did. In the first month of the second year of the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle, he laid its bases and set up its frames and put it Sorry, and put in its poles and raised up its pillars, and he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent over it, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark, and put the poles on the ark, and set the mercy seat above the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up the veil of the screen, and the screened the ark of the testimony as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he put the table and the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil, and arranged the bread on it before Yahweh as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand and the tent of meeting opposite, <coughs> excuse me, opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set up the lamps before Yahweh as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the golden altar and the tent of meeting before the veil and burned fragrant incense on it as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put in place the screen for the door of the tabernacle and set the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered on it burnt offerings and the grain offering as Yahweh's, Yahweh had commanded Moses. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it for washing, with which Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet when they went into the tent of meeting, and when they approached the altar, they washed as Yahweh commanded Moses, and he erected the court out around the tabernacle in the altar, and set up the screen of the gate of the court, so Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting, and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle, and Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting, because the cloud settled on it. And the glory, glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahweh was on the tabernacle day, tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night. In the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Sorry. 1 Kings 8, 1 through 21. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers, the houses of the people of Israel before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled to King Solomon on the feast of the month Athanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the Ark, and they brought up the Ark of Yahuwah, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent, the priests of the Levites brought them up, and King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled before him were with them before the arks, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the ark of the covenant, to Yah covenant of Yahweh to its place in the innermost in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, so that the cherubim overshadowed the, uh, overshadowed the ark and its poles. And the poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside. And they are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except for two tablets of stone that Moses put there in Horeb. Where Yahweh made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of Yahweh so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of Yahweh filled the house of Yahweh. Then Solomon said to Yahweh, he said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have indeed built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Yahweh. Israel, while all the assembly of Israel stood, and he said, Blessed be Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised 
with his mouth to David my father, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. But Yahweh said to David my father, Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did dwell you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son who shall be born to you shall build the house for my name. Now Yahweh has fulfilled his promise that he made. For I have risen in the place of David my father and sit on the throne of Israel as Yahweh promised. And I have built the house for the name of Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. And there I have, placed, I have provided a place for the ark in which is the covenant of Yahweh that he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. <clears throat> John 6, 1 through 71. After this, Yeshua went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the seas of T Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that were do that he was doing on the sick, Yeshua went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Yeshua said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? And he said to them, Excuse me. He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Yeshua said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Yeshua took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the, the fish as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Yeshua, Yeshua withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Yeshua had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Yeshua walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were frightened, but he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they were glad to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at land to which they were going. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Yeshua had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. And when they, when the crowd saw that Yeshua was not there, nor his disciples, they, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Yeshua. When they found them on the other side of the sea, they, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Yeshua answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs but because you ate your fill of the loaves, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, with which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him Elohim the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of Elohim? Yeshua answered them, This is the work of Elohim, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So, that, so they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? 
What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Yeshua then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of Elohim is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us his bread always. Yeshua said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you, I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me I will never cast out, for I have come down from heaven nor to do my own will. Not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that has been given me, but raise it up on the last day, for this is the will of my Father that who, everyone who looks to, on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about Him, because He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, It is, is not this Yeshua, the son of Joseph, the father and mother we know? How does He, how does he now say, I have come down from the heaven, from heaven? Yeshua answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by Elohim. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone who sees the Father except he who is from Elohim. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your father ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us... His flesh to eat. So Yeshua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day, for my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Yeshua said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Yeshua, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do not take offense at this. Then what is? what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are, in, are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Yeshua knew from the beginnings whose those were who did not believe. And who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Yeshua turned to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of Elohim. Yeshua answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? He spoke to Judas, the son of Simon. He spoke of Judas, the sign of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Revelations 15, 5-8 After this I looked, in the sanctuary of the tent of witness, in heaven was opened, and out of the sanctuary came the seven angels with the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, with golden sashes around their chests. And one of the four living creatures gave 
to the seven angels, seven golden bowls full of the wrath of Elohim, who lives forever and ever. And the sanctuary was filled with smoke from the glory of Elohim and from his power. No one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished. All right, Nick. My folder, please. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't say my beginning blessing. Uh, well, it's a little late now. I'm at the ending. It's... <laughs> Blessed art thou, Adonai Eli, king of the universe, who gets the Torah of truth and of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, give her the Torah. Bruka ta, Adonai Eli, he malak alom. Mashana ta, lenu, toredi met, vaishi, alom, natal, betta, can you, Bruka ta, Adonai, natin, ha, tara.